I figured I would do a mix of rapid chess and blitz chess, and also a mix of styles between instructive and destructive. Can you play a Halloween gambit? I'll probably save that for the destructive portion of the stream. <laughs> uh, might be a little bit uh, too wild for some instructive rapid. Although it's not that dubious of an opening. I, there's worse openings. Yeah, come to think of it, the Halloween Gambit is less dubious than the Stafford Gambit. And probably just as venomous, too. Um, yeah, let's hop in. Ten minutes. And playing a title player, Night Night 64 from Jamaica. Oh, there's a 13 hour difference between here in Singapore. Um, okay, so we have a Queen's Gambit declined. Um, I'll stay within my usual territory. I'll play Knight D7. This move sets up the elephant trap. Is takes, takes, takes. I take, oh no, my queen. But oh yes, because I win it back. And then uh, black is up a piece if uh, if white were to take. But white doesn't take, so play this. Um, bishop d3 or knight of 3 are both playable. And we do have a version of the queen's gambit declined exchange variation. Um, it doesn't make sense for me to go for Cambridge Springs now that there's no more tension between uh, the pawns. Like There's no possibility the fifth rank will open. So... I'll play in a, a more traditional sense, Bishop E7. It's a chess streaming night in Italy. Hi, Eric. Oh, hello to Plan Planter Ray. Okay, so we're going into a line that I actually haven't played in a while, but um, one of the main ideas, actually starting with Rook E8, uh, the idea is to put the knight on G6. Now, white usually goes for this minority attack. I'll throw an a6, because why not? Ah, oh, the queen is not on c2 yet. I don't think it makes a huge difference, though. Usually the queen's on c2, and I'm like, I, I would play bishop d6. Uh, if white plays this, I'd probably take and play bishop d6 anyway. Um, the main plan. For black is to play bishop d6 and then h6 and make it so I'm essentially getting this bishop off the board. And that's a useful thing about the knight controlling these squares. Queen b3. I don't think I've ever had this position before, but I don't think it makes much of a difference. I'll still go for this. Hey, it's Jonathan Sampson. Welcome back. Been watching a lot of Eric Rosen recently. Nice. I have been posting a lot more on YouTube recently. I think I've posted a video every day this month. I posted a reel on Instagram this morning. First time in over a month. I recently got a new laptop that has like faster editing capabilities. I was trying to figure out Final Cut Pro and how to like more effectively make a vertical video. So h6 is coming next. And the, the reason why I play bishop d6 first is because after h6, uh, if takes, I can take with queen. And then I'll be in better shape to attack. I do loosen this knight. Uh, if white were to take, I take back uh, on g5. Now I'm threatening this. This pawn is overworked. I do outsource some of my editing. Yeah, actually, shout out to Jonathan Schrantz, who's, uh, who's edited a, a decent amount in recent months, um, hiding potatoes in my videos. But I still enjoy the editing process. And sometimes it's nice to um, 
to just go through the whole creative workflow. Night H2. A few moves come to mind, like Knight H4. I mean, maybe I just play Knight H4 right away, like setting up Queen here. I'm not too scared of Knight G4 because Queen G5. It just seems like most of White's pieces abandon the king side, and most of my pieces are aimed at the king side. So it's looking nice. Hey, it's Emberg. Hey, Eric. Not to fear. You have one thing over the Eric bot. Oh, the you Rosen trophies. trophies. Yeah. <laughs> if only bots can be programmed to prefer certain positions and checkmates. It would be interesting to like make a bot that's optimized for achieving Rosen trophies. But then maybe it would play like the egg or the beach cafe every game, and stalemate every game. Okay, Rook C one. So another piece is abandoning the king. What is this? I mean, I could, I can take and then take. I think maybe white, yeah, white had to miss this move. Now g2 and e3 are both hanging. Now f3 is an idea. Expecting, uh, this is made into check and yeah, it's, uh, I feel bad for the king as a victim of negligence. All, all of its friends just went away from it. That was a, a fun game. I mean, this is, this is maybe a more extreme example of what can go right in the queen's gamut declined and how to get a really like strong attack. Usually it doesn't go this well, but, um, it's nice to at least show this instructive plan. I think a lot of people might learn the Queen's Gambit declined and maybe get to this position after castling and then just not know what to do. But it's helpful to kind of have these middle game maneuvers in store. And I can show the main line real quick because um, there's a cool bit of preparation. Imagine white plays Queen C2. There's a lot of ways that we could transpose into this position. Usually white plays this move earlier. I'd still go for this. And then if white goes for the minority attack, which is kind of the main plan, then I go for bishop d6, b5, takes, takes. I have h6. So it'd be very similar to what we just had in the game. Um, if takes, I'm happy to take here. And then there's not much white can do with the bishop and g4 is coming. So the main line is takes, takes. And there's an interesting tidbit about this position. Um, let me toggle the engine. So at first, the engine will say white's doing really well. But then you let it think. And it realizes that it's not so simple. And it initially suggested e4. Um, now white can, uh, white can start with taking and then play e4. And at first, it looks bad for black because e5 might be coming if takes and takes. But there's a really cool move in this position, knight f4. And I discovered this several years ago. Um, but the point is, after this, black temporarily loses a bishop, but then queen g4, black's winning back material with a better position. Uh, this is already much better for black. Yeah, white can survive with knight e1, takes, threatening mate, and then f3, defending. But then after takes, takes, and then queen d7, or queen e6, uh, black's going to be winning the pawn. So, okay, hopefully people learned a thing or two. I might put this game on YouTube, how to attack in the queen's gamut declined. Maybe make attack all uppercase in the title. Also, thank you, Andy Oxus, gifting five. I appreciate that. When do you think your D4 or your verse D4 course is coming? I'm still trying to figure out what to name it. So far I've I've named like the whole PGN file facing D4. 
Um, but yeah, it's going to be a complete repertoire against E4. And I'm realizing I don't actually have a... I haven't made a, a file on this specific line. Because it really only comes from this move order when White plays E3. I have to cover this line for the course. Um, I worked on it for probably like two to three hours today. Like the more I work on it, the more I realize there's like a ton more work to do. But I'm getting close to the point where I'll I'll be ready to record videos. And what I might end up doing is have like some pre-order or at least like have some part of it that's available before the whole thing is actually published. Um, because if I keep waiting until like everything is done, it might take another month or two. But it would be cool to have like um a presale where if if you buy the presale, then you can get a cheaper price and then eventually have access to everything. Um, I'm planning to self-publish it, so it won't be on any third-party sites, but it'll be posted on my my own site. Um, and it'll be a combination of like. EGN files and videos. At least that's the plan. I'm not planning to recommend the Alvin Counter Gambit, even though that can be a fun opening. But it's more a repertoire built around Cambridge Springs and Queen's Gambit Declined. And a lot of it is um a lot of it is like more dynamic and slightly offbeat, but very interesting lines that are still playable at like a high level. So let's move on. Um, gain seven rating points from that. Uh, we'll continue with Rapid. Yeah, the goal would be to make the PGN files accessible. So if you want to like plug in an adjustable, you could, but you can also like use it in chess base or leech chess study. Um, so you won't have to like be tied to any one platform. All right, let's play D5 again. I mean, this is the opening I've like studied the most in recent months playing against E4. There used to be a time in my life where I just dreaded playing against D4. Like I hated the positions I would get. But these days I'm like, I'm very much looking forward to playing against E4. Okay, we have the Cambridge Springs. This is, um, yeah, this is what I've been researching very recently. And this is really the starting position. Queen a5, uh, not only pressuring this diagonal, but also buying the bishop on g5. It's nice to see my opponent thinking. There's a lot of ways white can go wrong if white's not prepared. But there's a lot of branches here. Which, um, we'll see what my opponent chooses. Is this a weird Karo Khan? If anything, it's a weird Semislav. Because this is a Semislav structure. Um, there's not too many cases where Queen A5 is justified. But this is one of these cases where the Queen actually is very well placed on A5. Because the Knight's no longer pinned. And like already from here, there's very direct ways to apply pressure. Knight E4 and Bishop B4. I don't think I've... Looked at queen b3. I will say earlier today, I, I was uh, like building a whole file on like all the dubious moves between queen c2, rook c1, a3, and bishop d3. There's a lot of ways white can kind of play dubiously. I think queen, queen b3 is probably also dubious for the same reasons. Um, yeah, knight e4, and I already have a, a pretty straightforward threat. Although I guess, yeah, with the queen on c2, it doesn't defend a2, which sometimes falls. So I have um, bishop b4 and then rook c1. I'm actually happy that I'm I'm encountering something I haven't looked at yet. Because there will be an opportunity to learn after the game. 
Um, bishop b4, rook c1. If the queen were on c2, I would take on a2. But that's not the case. Uh, there is some, like knight b6, knight a4, but probably doesn't work. There's also uh, bishop b4, rook c1, c5. It's a very typical idea. I'm also considering, it's kind of a strange plan. In bishop b4, rook c1, c5, a3. Take, take, castle. Bishop d3, I take on d4. I'll play this. It's probably like what's most called for. Expecting this. It was actually a cool idea to play g5. Like rook c1. Five bishop g3 h5 comes to mind. And one point would be if knight takes g5, I take, 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 and then I win the bishop in the end. Um, I mean, it might be kind of artificial, but it's one of the most aggressive ways to play. I don't immediately see how white. I mean, white probably is okay in some line, but. I'm very tempted to go for it. Do it. Do it. Uh, C5 was my first impression. Let me, let me spend another moment looking at uh, C5. The c5 a3, and I essentially, like, I can't take because takes and it's my queen. c5 a3, take, take. I give the bishop pair, and then some bishop d6 ideas. And then c5 doesn't do that much. Okay, I'm going for g5. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. Serik, I'd make a baby joke, but I just put mine into bed and I can't handle another one right now. Uh, wait, you just put your baby joke into bed? Or maybe your baby into bed? Okay, I'll try not to make any loud noises. I have to let the baby sleep peacefully. So a few months ago, I was helping, uh, I was secretly helping Andrea Botez prepare for her match, her chess boxing match against Dina Balankaya. And we were looking at some lines in the London where it was a very similar position to this, except reverse and the bishop would be developed. But there were a lot of lines where this theme comes up of like, pushing the g and h pawns to try and trap the bishop. And this comes up in the Ragozin as well. It could take, but I think f6. Sometimes the drawback of playing in this style is um, this diagonal can be weak. Like if the queen were on c2, then I'd have to worry more about queen g6. But with the queen on b3, it's not really um, that terrifying. And now I can take the bishop. And this is really the whole point. I don't win any material, but I damage the structure. I get the bishop pair. Now I can play this, which essentially forces king f2. Queen c7, knight e2. This is d6, king f2. I also have h5 to include.
And position is still tricky to play. Bishop d6, king f2. I'm trying to figure out a plan here. Like e5. I go for h4. I'm going to start with this. I just don't know what my next move is. Maybe b6. Maybe just queen d8. Maybe the queen just wants to come back towards the king side. There is an idea a uh, queen d8 to play f5. I over defend g5. Not sure what else white can be considering apart from king f2. Also consider taking, but e6 becomes weak. I was briefly looking at taking, swing the queen over. I do have to watch my time. King f2, queen c7. And there's also takes in that line. Maybe I just play queen d8. Queen d8, bishop d3, f5, h4. Maybe, okay, king, I'm using most of my opponent's time to think. King f2, maybe I do play h4? Idea being, after takes, takes, I can freely play f5. Oh, wow. Really? I mean, white wants counterplay, but I'd take with check. And probably something like rook g8. Could also play b6. But b6 kind of ends in my queen. b6, bishop g6, king e7. I play rook g8. Let's think about this. So if I play b6, the queen can't really be exploited. And bishop a6 is just so useful. I think I play b6. There's a lot of positions uh, in Cambridge Springs where like b6, bishop a6 is the only logical way to develop the bishop. I guess I do weaken c6. And maybe bishop e7. Wow, e4. And now it's just getting sharp. Ooh, bishop a6. And there is bishop f4 first. I don't think I can afford to take an all queen e6. All right, let's play this. What a crazy position. I'm thinking if takes, I play c5. And I could also take on d3 first. And then the king takes, and I don't see how to actually exploit it.
Crossing doesn't work. I think C5 is the way to go. Doesn't look great though. And there's an idea of taking a knight C5. And both our both of our kings are in various precar very what was I saying? Very very precarious positions. I was about to say various precarious positions. <laughs> Thank you, JJ Plays. Appreciate the first time prime. I'm down about a minute. Am I threatening this? Probably probably not. Not sure if I want to castle or maybe just play King D8 and try and get Rook E8. Okay, I have to take. The well, white's going for Queen trade. I think I have to take. Take and then A6. The bishop covers these squares. Quack. Well, Ricardo. That was a big transformation. You gotta play king f7. Pair rookie eight. It's equal material. Like my bishop. Although. Okay, I'll still like my bishop. Actually, 94, I have rookie 8. King d3. I'm super curious to analyze this afterwards. Start with Bishop F4. I think this is not King of the Hill chess. Five. Knight e5 also possible. Might be a little bit worse here. White's knights are kind of strong. B4 is coming. B four ninety four. The rook wants to be on D eight or C eight. Probably D eight. Or might come G four, maybe rook H eight. I take on C three. Probably not. There's this move. Looks ugly. Maybe necessary. And it's a nice blockading square if I can get there. And yeah, knights work well together. At least I have a good spot for the bishop. One is a little bit weak. How does white defend? I need three. The king c4 walks into b5. Knight e3, I play bishop f4. Oh, I can't take the pawn because knight e7. Very tricky. Do I play a5? Do this move anyway. Obstructing the rook from defending, threatening to the knight. 
Night retreats, I win the pawn. Although here, X takes F pawn's attacks. That's a move. Hmm. Confusing position. I'm still trying to win the pawn. Maybe I should play h4 first. It's a good fight so far. D6, I have this. Turning into a bullet game. I won on time. Man, that was such a difficult fight. Opponent played well, too. Like, I don't know if I had... I don't know if I was ever, like, better. At, or, like, much better at any point. Maybe I was better from opening. Yeah, this should be preferable for black. But very tense position throughout. Um... Yeah, here it seemed like it was going to get really chaotic, but then Queens got traded, and it was still a very confusing position to to navigate. Would this be a dirty flag? The final position, I think, was equal. Maybe I'm slightly worse. It wasn't super dirty compared to some other other flags that I've had. <laughs> Um all right, let's uh let's learn something. So Cambridge Springs. It's been played oh there's um yeah, almost twenty seven hundred games in the Masters database. On Lee Chess there's over half a million. And Queen B three is the what, like almost tenth most popular move? I think way down here. But still played over 10,000 times. Yeah, there's different levels of dirtiness. Eight says that's a six on the dirty scale. <laughs> I'd probably agree with that. All right, so. So Queen B3, it's not the most testing line. Um, and yeah, 94. There's about four. In g5, okay. Oh, oh, I should play g5 immediately. Maybe there's some nuances. Yeah, I guess with g5 immediately, then it would be very similar to what happened in the game, but I don't spend the tempo moving here and back. So white essentially doesn't get the useful move of rook, um, rook c1. I assume we go for the same plan. Although here it would transpose directly because it's saying bishop before. 
So what's the difference? G5. Oh, maybe there's not much of a difference. It was just low depth from the engine. Okay, so I feel like I, I handled things decently well. Um, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice idea that it kind of comes out of nowhere. So it takes, takes. I play bishop d6. But bishop d3 wasn't like a huge mistake. I was more expecting king f2. Queen c7, knight e2. Although I don't know if I was going to play queen c7. I don't understand this. Takes, queen takes? Ah, knight b6. Queen d3? Hi, Eric, what have you done? What have I done? Um, I don't know. If you've just if you've just joined, maybe you can ask other people what I've done so far this stream. I have played two games. I'm trying to take away some lessons. Yeah, I was scared actually about this line. Because taking on G3 and then takes takes. Maybe black's still okay. Okay, let's see what happened in the game. So bishop d3, I took. b6 was inaccurate. Yeah, it just got very sharp. White was maybe slightly better if knight b5. Queen b5 was played. Yeah, I don't think there was any point in this game where either side was winning. It was actually a very good fight. Like, we both made, like, maybe small mistakes or inaccuracies at some point. Rook a5 was my one mistake. Less than 10 seconds left. Yeah, the only mistakes came in time pressure. Both over 90% accuracy. Okay. It is uh, energy consuming playing like, higher level rapid. This is, like these games, I really have to stay focused for uh, essentially the whole time. Like, there's not really a moment to sit back and relax. Anyway, hope people are enjoying this, maybe learning a thing or two. I see. Jared Fences asking, can you play an accelerated dragon? That's, that's definitely an opening in my repertoire. Uh, maybe I'll play one more rapid game and then switch to Blitz. Bear with me one moment. Oh, playing Dabo. Dabo is sometimes in chat. And we don't have an accelerated dragon, unfortunately. I'll play knight c6. Maybe we can transpose, but maybe not. Knight d4. Yeah, this is a trendy line these days. I think a6. Bishop d3, e6. And then... Yeah, this is some theory. I'll admit I don't know so much here. I know g5 is like sometimes a move, depending what white does. Yeah, I think here g5 is actually justified. But my knowledge of this is very limited. Hey, it's someone getting merch. Someone purchased, oh no. My queen. Chessboard hoodie for $44.95. I do appreciate that. I'm pretty sure Judith Polgar played like a similar move. Maybe not this exact position, but this idea sometimes comes up. So g3. Um, bishop g7 is playable. h6. Do I want to play g4? g4, knight h4, h5.
Actually, why not? The sideline the knight. Reinforce the pawn. Grab space. My plan is bishop here. Complete development. Um, yeah, let me try and draw some queenside arrows. B5, bishop, b7. But the pawns like this, it's very unlikely I'll castle kingside. Like more likely the king stays in the center or I castle queenside. And it's nice that I'm controlling d4, so white can't really bust open the center and easily get to my king. Sometimes knight d5 is an idea. X-ray vision. Okay, let's play this. D6. So this isn't quite an accelerated dragon. You're the one person asking before the game. But uh, we do have a dragon type structure. And this is not an open Sicilian. An accelerated kingside pawn storm. White does want to play D4. Wait, is B2 just hanging? Maybe there's some compensation. It's weird to give away B2 like that. I think I just take it. I lose a couple of tempi. White definitely gets compensation. C3. So, okay, b5, d4, takes take. Hmm. Um, another thought that came to mind is knight g6. Knight g6. X takes d4 and then something like queen e7. Looks a little bit sus. Oh, the idea would be to castle kingside. That allows knight f4 though. Six. I don't want to take too long here. E5 is another consideration. Maybe I do end up casting. Maybe just like e6 and queen c7. Uh, really not sure. How about 95? 95 d4 and f3 takes takes. Doesn't look good. F takes king six. Find maybe the most attractive out of everything. It's weird though, but I think I'm gonna go for this. The idea is to um to get rid of this knight. Even though it's sidelined, it does blockade. And I felt like a lot of lines my knights just overlap. Initially, I was thinking about playing knight g6 and taking and using that file, but I didn't like the prospect of knight f4. So having a knight on g6 is one way to maybe try and deter knight f4. And if white doesn't play d4 here, then I can play knight eg6. Or knight, uh, <laughs> both knights are e knights. 
Light 7, G6. The idea that if takes, I have the inter or in between move by F3. But it's getting spicy. Very tense position here. So thank you, Ghetto Gambit, for the bits. Alexa play Nickelback, welcome back. King of Van and Keezy with the first time primes. I do appreciate the support. Yeah, often during these like more competitive rapid games, I'm looking less at chat, trying to um trying to stay focused. Down a little bit of time. About a minute. This is the first extended thing from white. Okay, so that knight's pinned. Queen c7 comes to mind. I'm gonna just play queen c7. There's also f6. Play queen c7. Yeah, in this time format, sometimes I have to pick the moments just to rely on intuition. Knight g6. I don't want to open the c file and allow my queen to be harassed. Now, without taking on d4, it sometimes allows d5. But I think I'll be okay with that. Tension between the knights. Take with queen. Although, I mean, if I take with queen, there's takes, takes, knight of four. If I take with knight, Knight four can come anyway. I probably take with knight. Avoid the structure getting damaged. Now this bishop is uncontested. White doesn't have a dark square bishop. The king is chilling. We might see the bishops fight for the long diagonal. I would like to play b5 and bishop b7, but I have to watch out for the rook being vulnerable or a4 happening. I'm thinking bishop d7. I'm not committing to b5. Although, wait, takes, takes. I think this is okay. There's a line where I might sack b7, get bishop c6, and then c3 is vulnerable. We have another kind of confusing position. Doing bishop f6. Target the knight. Rook b8 could be useful. Or we defend the pawn. It's turning into a blitz game. We're both below five minutes. The nice thing is the position is relatively solid for black. Like it's hard for white to target any clear weakness. 
Like H5 looks maybe vulnerable, but it's only attacked once, defended once. If ever d5, I'm probably happy to close things down or just leave the tension. e5. I was not on my radar. I mean, this is another pawn sacrifice from white. Um, I don't have to take. I think bishop c6 comes to mind. I think I just played bishop c6. I could take. Wait. Yeah, I should take first. Clarify the center a little bit. d5. What? So it takes d6's idea. Wow. I mean, on the surface, this looks very dubious for white, but it's interesting. I play here, there's takes and take. Wow. Easy move. On e on d five first. I really am like losing something. I have an idea though. Yeah, this move. Okay, so if takes, the calculation is takes, takes, can't take with check, because then um, I take back with queen. To take here with check. My main idea is at the very end, like whichever rook captures on d1, I play bishop a4. I hit the rook, and I also am still hitting the knight. I'm b7 is vulnerable. I think the fact that the knight and rook will be hanging, and there's no rook d4. Counterattack would be okay for me. But it's still terrifying. Oh, I forgot about. Yeah, there's a move here. Maybe it's okay though. I forgot about this move. I have this move. That's yeah, scary for both of us. White has things hanging. My king's very exposed, though. And we're both getting very low on time. Okay, that's a good sign. I'm losing a pawn. I guess B5. Eh. Got careless. I 
Still not simple. Defending a six. Yeah, this is far from simple. Hmm. Have to take. Not good. Man, it's still a fight though. I have rook and bond for two miners, and rooks are actually like pretty powerful here. D two. No time to hesitate. I, think I may have just plundered there. Oh, I blundered. Okay. Hmm. What to do? Okay, I resign. Good game, though. Oh, very timely resignation, too. Yeah, it got very tricky. The pawn sack in the, the opening was interesting. Um, maybe I was better... Yeah, after bishop b2, black is for choice. But then it wasn't so simple. Like, already white's for choice. Okay, apparently bishop f6. Not the most natural move. I guess there's some concrete reasons, like knight g2. Wow, knight g2, knight e5. Knight f3 is, like, unstoppable. That's crazy. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, this idea with um, e5 and d5 was a bit surprising. Apparently, I can just be completely winning in this line. But even this is not so intuitive. It's just a very sharp position. And then here, yeah, knight d3. Bishop c4 should have been played. D6 was a big mistake. Yeah, I just kind of lost the edge. And even here, it's playable, but then I took on E2. <laughs> At first, like, for some reason, when I played Rook D2, I thought I blundered Knight D6, Knight E4, but the Rook can dig on D6. But then I actually blundered Rook A2. Does Gary love pineapple on pizza? A good question.
I'm Gary gifted to generic pineapple name. I think I'll move on to some blitz. I think I lost a little bit of rapid rating. Or no, I, I gained one point in rapid out of the games I've played so far. Started at 2616. I mean, all the games were, were interesting. The first game was pretty quick. Second two were super tense. So pivoting to blitz. Um, I did gain a decent amount of blitz rating yesterday. Does it show? Oh yeah, yesterday I gained about 48 points from this title arena. How come I don't play with increment when it comes to rapid? Yeah, that's a fair question. Um, 10.0 is by far the most popular rapid time control. So if I played with increment, it would be much harder to find like strong opponents willing to play. Um, but usually in the Tano pool, I can find like, decently strong players. Yeah, usually like these, I think these time controls, sometimes you have to wait a long time to get a game. So uh, I think I'll join the Blitz pool. Ten plus zero and five plus three seem like the same game to me. Yeah, they are similar. They're a little bit different though. Welcome back Tuesday's Green. Sometimes it's makes the biggest difference when there's time trouble and yeah, depending whether or not you have increment. Okay, playing Tiger Scott. Uh I'll play a Pierce. Or the Philidor. Actually, I showed a game on stream yesterday that featured something very similar. I was responding to a question how to study like from your own games. And I used an example of a game I played against Obava in this line. And yesterday I found a game that Obava lost to David Navarra. Um, David Navarra playing the white pieces uses B3 idea. And this is my first time playing the idea. But the point is to bring the bishop along the long diagonal. That looks solid. Oh, thank you, Snoo Snoo, the first time prime. I have to be a little bit careful about this pawn. Um, but the point is to play knight g3, and then eventually knight to f5. Queen d2, rook d1, maybe bishop c3. Eyeing bishop a5. And bishop a5, knight b6, and then c4. And it's one way to try and chase away the rook from the the file that might open up at some point. Rook c8. I still play bishop a5. I think I do. But now what? Leaving some tension. Play C3 uh, or take. Taking actually looks nice. The bishop's going to come to C4. 
The D file is opening and there's no access for rook d8. It's such a weird square for the bishop, but it's it's annoying for black. It's hard to remove the bishop. Okay, probably f3 makes sense. E pawn is no longer a concern. I have ideas of this and this. Pieces are placed really nicely. Abandoning the queenside bonds. I mean, threatening this. Oh, I had the chance to play queen g6 there. Ah, I should have played that. And then knight f5, like just leave the pin. That would have been threatening f7. Wow. That looks like a mouse slip. Oh no, my prime. But I don't know if it. Uh, I don't know if it's a mouse slip or a blunder, or maybe both. I could just take and then win material. I hit the rook, yeah. I still have some attack. Queen g3. I could also take. And then take. Maybe here. It was a pleasant game. It was nice to play an idea that I discovered yesterday. Uh, this B3 idea. This is maybe already like not the most radical. Because usually the pawn goes to C6 before black develops the bishop. Oh wow, Jobava has had this position twice. Once against Anand. So b3, not the most common move. I guess d5 is the most principled. Okay, let me try and catch up with chat before playing another game. Thank you, Harrison. Oh yes, you're prime. Sometimes it's hard to follow all the threads in chat. I'll look at comments and they're, they're out of context because I didn't see the previous comments. I see there's a question. Um, would you rather have half your opponent's time? Wait. What would you rather? Half your opponent's time and double your time. Wait, I'm trying to understand this. So basically have a lot more time. I'm really trying to understand this. I feel like there's a lot of commas. Have your opponent's time, double your own time, remove a pawn. Are we doing all of these? This sounds pretty good if I have a lot more time than the opponent and they're down a pawn. Or be able to check, check either top engine evaluation once a game. Oh, definitely the first option, just having a pawn extra and more time. <laughs> yeah, top engine mover evaluation maybe could help, but won't necessarily help every game. Oh, I'm picking one of the four. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I'd still go with the remove a pawn. Um, I think it's it's generally better to have a 
an advantage in the position rather than time. Although maybe it depends on the time control. If it's like bullet chess, then the 30 seconds is way more valuable than the pawn. All right, let's move on. Um, maybe I'm on a quest to 2600. Oh, did I not read it fully? Oh, in classical chess. Yeah, I'd still I'd still take the pawn. Yeah, I think there were a few different ways to read that with the uh, with the commas. Okay, playing Coventry from Argentina. Oh, uh, play e4. D4. Okay, we're transposing into uh usually what I get from D4. It's a tricky move order though. Because bishop e6, I have knight d5. I still have knight d5 if I want it. Bishop d3 first. And yeah, there's a weird line where like I can take and play Ninety-five. Hmm. I'm spending way too much time here. Night B five. Night B five. Doesn't quite work. G4. Okay, now I think knight B5 is playable. Still kind of risky, but it takes. I also have knight D6 there. And king C7. The plan is after it takes, I take on A7. I forgot king C7, rook A8. Maybe it's still okay. Yeah, box realizing that King C7 should have been played. Um, I'll still just leave the knight there. And there is, I guess, takes in c5. Oh, there's that move too. In trouble. I have three pawns for the piece. Knight c3 coming. Rook d8 can't be played because then the king's overworked. Knight d7's off limits. It's a tricky position for black. Bishop c6 I take and win the knight. A lot of ways to blunder here. Rook a5 might be playable. Then I probably play c4. Maybe I still play c4. I use the extra pawns that I have. Yeah, 
Yeah, but I can't take because I take king b7, I fork b3. Okay. Getting some material. I just miss this. No, I didn't miss it the previous move. Knight was defended. Wow. What's happening? this Okay, I'm up I'm up four pawns now. I won back the piece. Let's uh make sure I don't get mated. King finds safety on B4. I'm up five pawns. Okay, rook a4 I take, and it's not stalemate. If I took with pawn, it would be stalemate. Okay. I was ready to make, what, six more rooks? What to do, though? That was an interesting game. Maybe knight b5 wasn't the best, but it led to a cool position. Yeah, engine says I should be patient. Pawn a3. What about this opening? Ah, so this line I should just avoid castling and go straight for bishop h6. And what if, um, what if takes in queen a5? Then I can just develop normally. Okay. Does chess.com tell you who had the same position in the past? Um, they also have an opening explorer, but usually it's based off um, individual players. They don't have the same type of like global database that Wii Chess has. Um, they do have like their version of the Masters database, so you can still filter through games with strong players. But Wii Chess database is very special because, like, from the starting position. It's referencing, what number is this? Four million games? No, four billion games. <laughs> it's been a while since I've looked or I've tried to read large numbers. Yeah, that's three commas. Those are a lot of games. Eric mentioned the six game or the six queen Alakon game. Yeah, um, if you search for search for Eric Rosen six queens, and this is his first video. Six queens after sixteen moves. I can quickly find the game too. Um, the other day, wait, no, this line. The other day, I had this line. Takes, 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 takes. It's been played just over 900 times on chess. And how many times have I played it? 
I've had this position four times. And the, the game <laughs> the game that ended with six queens was this one, where we just both made a new queen. So six queens on move sixteen. Oh, Matt is playing the Ontario chess the Ontario Open chess tournament. Nice. Yeah, doing daily like tactics and exercises is a good way to warm up. Um playing like over the board training games too. If you can find a training partner around your level, that's a good way to prepare. And then a lot of like non chess things that help you with chess. Eating well, sleeping well, exercise. The big part of tournament preparation is being in like the best mental and physical form possible for the day of the tournament or the weekend of the tournament. Any tips for online players who are starting out playing over the board tournaments? I guess that's a similar question. You definitely don't want to burn yourself out before a tournament. Like when I was younger, I sometimes did this. Like I'd get very excited for a tournament and I did so much chess like right beforehand. And then I was kind of burnt out like midway through. So it's good to pace yourself. Um, very important to just enjoy yourself and have fun and go into the tournament with a mindset to learn and like, take away a lesson from every game, regardless of the result. Definitely make an effort. I mean, in most over the world tournaments, you are required to take notation. But then afterwards, you should like save all your games in a digital format and analyze your games and see what can be improved. Okay, let's run our prediction. Um, what will happen first? What will happen first? What's my rating? Wait. Is my rating 2564? Oh, 2573. So, what will happen first? Eric hits 2600 splits. Eric falls below 2550 blitz. This could actually be long stream. <laughs> Okay, we'll just say Eric hits Eric's Blitz rating. Oh! Okay. <laughs> we'll have a two-minute two minute prediction. I'm kind of like in between these two numbers right now. And we will start. Yeah, sometimes I'm not the best at minimizing the character limit. Hey, Eric, is it hard to become a 1600, feet a, a 1600 rated FIDE player? Um, I guess it depends where you're at. If you're starting from scratch, it might take a couple years or longer. But if you're 1500, then it'd maybe just take a few months of hard work. But sometimes it's about actually like going and playing FIDE rated events. I know they're not always the most accessible to everyone. The one bet 250,000 channel points, I'll fall below 2550. Oh dear. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, there's more there's more points predicting I'll fall below. Ouch. But it's it's kind of close. It's, it's kind of a toss up. Wait, the ask question reward isn't working. Did someone redeem it? And did I miss it? Oh, Mangork asked a question. Wait a minute, how do I show this? Yeah, sometimes if you redeem that reward, then I won't see it right away. Okay, so here's, here's the question. Do you have any advice for managing time better for Rapid? I usually rush, rush too much and enter the endgame with five minutes on the clock. 
That's interesting because a lot of people have like the the different problem of spending spending too much time early in the game and then getting into time trouble. Um, I mean, if you're referring to ten minute chess, it's not a bad thing that you're moving quickly, but I mean, generally, time management is very much related to the skill of identifying critical moments where if there's a moment in the game that requires like important calculation or an important decision that might change change things drastically whether it's like the the overall structure or maybe there's an opportunity to win material usually like the critical moments are when you want to spend the most time and it can take experience to be able to identify like what moments are critical what moments call for just a quick intuitive move um yeah a lot of it comes with experience but if you have issues moving too quickly then it can be important to have like a mental checklist before you make every move and this probably applies more to classical chess rather than rapid chess. But you can also apply it to rapid chess. Like before you make every move, you should like visualize it, um, blunder check, make sure you're not losing anything, uh, try and predict what your opponent will do. Another strategy is before you make every move, you should usually consider at least two options. Sometimes people move quickly because they, they play the first thing that comes to mind. But... Sometimes if you just slow down and consider more options, then you'll be more likely to be in a spot to make a better decision. And there's other types of questions you can ask yourself, like what the weaknesses are for both sides, what the worst place piece is, and how can it be improved? What is opponent's threat? If you need to stop it. Okay, so I already played Tiger Scott. Had that game earlier. A nice kind of... Oh, are we going to have a Jobava London? I guess we are. Play this line. Yeah, Bishop G4 is a, a nice sideline. Queen D2, okay. With a3, it's not likely white's going to castle, because then it's easier to attack. So hitting both pawns. Expecting knight a... Oh, no, knight a4 just loses the pawn. What am I expecting? I guess knight e2, queen b2, rook b1. I play this move. Idea knight c4. Also allowing for bishop d6. b3 prevents knight c4, but it does weaken c3. It's a fancy pirate getting merch. Hi, Eric. Hello. Ahoy. All right, up on time. Some tension. If ever g5, I'm ready to play knight h5. White's keeping the tension. Now I'm threatening to take and then maybe this move, hitting both knights. Oh, the queen can take though. Let's start with h6. I 
The castling could walk into e5. Have the pin. I guess I've committed myself to playing Blitz until I I pass 2600 or fall below 2550. Oh man. Yeah, I could have many more games to play. So g5. I take queen takes. Hmm. Not super simple. Yeah, this move. A weird looking move, but the knight can redevelop. F5 would be a nice square. Cover h6 as well. G6, I have f5, maybe just f6. And it's not a bad idea to just castle. The structure is very closed. Therefore, I think I just take in C3. Five. It's a free bishop. Almost didn't see my bishop was attacked. The D pawn is advancing. Hey, it's G Spades gifting five. Thank you, G Spades. Wow, do this. Almost a stalemate trick. It's not stalemate though. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? Okay. <laughs> For a moment, I was scared that the clock like hit zero and nothing happened. It's maybe Lee Chess just like running its algorithm to make sure it's not stalemate. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was a funny finish. Okay, gained a bit of rating. I'm going to take a small break. Uh, I'll be back momentarily. Hey, it's Gary gifting five. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate all the, the nice support. I had pizza the other day. I forgot to mention, there was a new pizza place that opened not too far away. And it was good pizza. It was like thin crust, vegetarian. I'll probably go back at some point. They have like at least a dozen different types. Nice support. Oh, thank you, Sega Seidel, for the nice support. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you're just joining, maybe I should update the stream title. Uh... Because the rapid chess is over, this stream 
will not end until I pass 2600 or fall below 2550. Blitz. Okay. So far, it, it seems like I'm in like decent form, better form than the last few days. Playing Blitz 16, we have a Reti opening. Okay. Maybe transpose into, yeah, Queen's Gambit declined, exchange variation. Ninety four idea. This is reminiscent of a uh, London, actually, a kind of reverse structure. I'm happy to play against isolated queen's pawn. White might be losing the pawn already because the queen and queen and knight are a bit. Um, well, knight's pinned. Queen is a bit overworked. There is that move. But if I take wait a minute. If I take with the rook and play bishop g6. If I take with knight. I think I take with knight first. And I'm either winning the pawn or damaging the structure. Still playing against IQP. Uh, G6 is natural. Yeah, the idea is just to like be very solid. Probably Queen F6 and Rook D5. There's no Queen E5 because pawn's pinned. Okay, going after this pawn. G5 looks interesting, but let's hold off. The H5 first. And white's really tied down now. Okay. Looks like I'm finally winning material. Or no. Never mind. <laughs> Why did I think I was winning material? Uh rook there. Is first. Still poking and prodding. A5, perhaps. This reminds me of a game between Karpov and Korchnoi. There's a similar, like, IQP struggle. B5. And Queen D7 first. You know, all these pawns are potential weaknesses. So A4, I have this move. Hitting the rook. There is queen b1. But now I take. Yeah, we're going to be up at least two pawns.
I'm okay with losing the sea pawn. As long as I keep one of the pawns. That moves a little bit unsettling. It feels like I'm making progress. Making a lot of progress. Okay. <sighs> I'll have to show the Karpov Korchnoi game. Alternate title. This stream will not end until I swindle an epic stalemate <laughs> with only 0 0.01 seconds left on the clock. Uh... Warm greetings from Liverpool, and what a fun video that was. Someone saw the most recent YouTube video, or maybe Instagram Reel. I, I posted that on, yeah, YouTube, Instagram. Welcome back, Fang Duster. So before I move on to the next game, I want to wanna try and find this game. I'm doing a simple Google search. I think it's, man, maybe I can find it from my YouTube channel. Happy. I play the game in Norway. I think it's this one. Okay. This is a video Fame Duster was referring to. But this video. Good luck with the rating climb. Welcome to my round three recap. Uh, I'm going to try. Wait a minute. Yeah. So in the description of this video, I mention uh, Karpov, Korch or Korchnoi Karpov, as one of these like model games. And this game actually I had I had a nice like instruction an instructional positional play against uh, the the pawn. But this Karpov game I just want to show the similarities. What does this do? Oh. Maybe it wasn't like completely similar, but the fact that white had like d4 and f4 and then like weakness on b2, it kind of felt felt close. Like sometimes to win these positions, you have to exploit multiple weaknesses. And it took a lot of patience. Okay, over 2580. Thank you, Mathletic-ish. Okay, so I'm on a small win streak. Oh, I forgot to update the stream title. <laughs> Not sure if I should wait until I have an epic stalemate to end the stream. All right, e5. So this is known to be like good for white, but it's still tricky. Now, this is a playable move. I'm trying to remember what I do against this move. All right, with that move, I have this move. I don't want to jinx myself, but this looks really, really close to winning. Like, completely winning. There's f6. Okay, this is actually kind of tricky. Did this. This is really the only move. 
If I take queen f4, yeah, I'm just winning. And I'm threatening mate on g7 and h7. Oh, there's a typo in the stream title. Oh, or fall below. Okay, I see. Okay, that was nice. Beating an FM in 13 moves. So I'm 13 points away. Let me quickly review this. I had a game not too long ago that reached this position, and I, I lost after bishop takes e5 because I took the rook and just hung my queen. So I'm not supposed to take the rook. Just any other move. h4. I guess white just has a powerful attack. g4 coming. King b Maybe I would play king b1. Rook e8. My three bishop here. There's so much power. Okay. I'm almost out of tea. But thankfully, before this stream, I didn't just make a cup of tea. I made a pot of tea. A green tea. Kind of room temperature tea. <laughs> but it's still good. Okay. I need 13 more rating points, but really I just want to play good moves. Hopefully the rating will come. All right, let's play knight c3. This is a fun one. This is like, um, it started as a London, but now we're having a Jobava London. And pawn e4. Yeah, I usually, as black, I usually take with knight on e4. There's some small differences. Knight d7. I mean, knight b5 already looks attractive. There's pawn e5. Play bishop b5. I'm really torn here. I'll play knight b5. Not 100% sure. Just seeing this line, bishop e3. It might backfire. But. I mean, black has some issues to solve. If it takes on c5, I take trade queens. I thought this would be okay. I am down the pawn. Hmm. Mm, take. All right, let's go for this. Something's gone wrong. This is playable. And d5 will come. Ah, f2 is vulnerable. Oh, this is actually really bad. I'm just losing. I have a trick. I guess ninety five and it's not good though. Yeah, 
Yeah, good move. I blundered there, but Black didn't punish me. That's a good move. I have to take. There's a lot of ways to blunder her back. Not one of them, though. Ending Rook D2, also sheltering the pawn. Still losing. Box playing this very well. A little bit of hope. Wow. Oh, the fighting paid off. Oh, man. I mean, I just, like, I got a much worse position, but somehow I just kept staying alive. Yeah, there was a moment. Where was it? Oh, yeah, it was here. Black can play this move. This just wins on the spot. Because then I don't even get to win the knight because my rook and uh, bishop are attacked. Very fortunate there. I mishandled the opening. Knight b5 is, wow, already much worse for me. Um, oh, b4. b4 should have been on my radar. It's an interesting move, though, knight, knight d7. Yeah, my, what was the other option? Yeah, I was considering bishop b5, which is maybe the better approach. e5 is a hard move to play because it gives up the pawn. It does trade. Oh, black has to play e5. What if queen a5? Queen d4 is just crushing, wow. Okay, good to know. Oh, I can um, activate the heart rate monitor. Yeah, I haven't had it this stream. I do have my watch.
Why undouble the epons? Oh, um, well, they're hard to actually like attack. An e4 pawn restricted my development. At this point, it's already much worse for white. I was just trying to develop, though. There are other lines where f3 is very typical, even against these pawns. In the wrong app. Okay, our rate is normal. I think it takes a moment. Markovsky has just lost 50 elo with the cow opening. Yeah, sometimes certain openings are not meant to be played consistently. Holy cow. <laughs> okay. Back to Blitz. Less than 10 points away. Yeah, in that case, 92, knight g3 was probably a better approach, but it always depends on the situation. Okay. Haven't had a Stafford this stream. And I guess we won't have a Stafford. We'll have a Bowden Kizritsky. So this is basically a reverse Stafford gambit. F6 is really the only move for black to try and fight for an edge. I'll play g6. have to be careful, though. And the usual plan is like d6 and queen e7, c6, bishop e6. It looks very awkward. Okay, I'm <laughs> behind development. My d4, haven't seen this one before. This move. F4 is coming probably. My idea is to play d5. I want to play d5, castle, and enjoy, li <laughs> enjoy life. And I'm running out of voice. The problem with d5 is it opens up these ideas. I think it's OK. And this pawn's pinned. Castle. And Bishop G4. I mean, there's still a lot of alignment in many different directions. Can I take the knight? Or take the bishop? I could take the knight as well. This looks simple enough. White still has some pressure. I'm maintaining an extra pawn. Oh, how about c5? I'm losing material. I have to take. Not the end of the world, though. How to do this? Six is coming. Okay, let's start with this. I'm 
That's a good move. Hey, it's Thirsty Monster. What's up, Thirsty Monster? If you're just joining, I, I'm in a pickle trying to survive here. That move. Getting the thing and the other thing. Rookie 8, we trade and I win the pawn in the end. Rook moves, I win the pawn. I guess there's no rookie 7. I'm just worse. Oh, what to do? Actually, a really annoying position. It's going to take another miracle. Wow. Wow. I don't know how I survived another like completely losing situation. Wow. Yeah, I, I just got into trouble. I think like already after C4, it's like, it's not easy. But time saved me. I was down on time too. I was down 30 seconds in this position and down material. Where did I go wrong? Yeah, I was too eager to simplify. This is one of, yeah, it's a moment actually that I saw a move and it looked fine, so I played it. But if I just considered like the other option, like looking back on it, we have seven. Just keeps so much more control. And then I'm threatening e4, and my queen is more effective than white's queen. And then yeah, then white's already for choice. And then when white gave back the exchange, it was a very good decision because the plan is so easy, and my rook's tied down to the d pawn. I just didn't see any way to like put up much resistance. Although I guess I managed to resist a little bit. Yeah, because idea is if takes takes I win the pawn. Okay, five points away. If I won every blitz game this stream. Maybe? Playing Evelyn Z. Play D4. Baba London. Yeah, these lines are actually very, very true. Inside Castle.
theory. Can be one. Big shout out to Daniel Nerditsky and Bortnik for including this analysis in their course. Because I did pick up some ideas from uh, their course in this specific variation. Hey, it's Botez Live. What's a Botez Live? Thanks for the raid. If you're just joining, I'm being like brutally attacked almost. So I have to be careful. I think G4 is logical. Maybe A3. Maybe like A3 first. Ensuring there's no funny business. Yeah, hope you had a good stream. Not sure if that was Alex or Andrea. But good to see you. Uh, B5 is coming. I mean, I just want to checkmate. Like, G4, B5. Commit. Take a moment here. Good night, Eric. Good luck in your game. Thank you. Might need it. Okay, I think I'm going to abandon my king and just go straight for the mate. The idea is this, 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 check and mate. If this, 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 I still play this? Take, take? A very confusing position. I could also take the pawn first. Yeah, that makes more sense. And then the bishop can come to e5. This wasn't the original idea. Ah, oh, there's queen takes though. But still, rook b is off limits. I don't know what's happening. I mean, there's still these ideas too. Bishop h6, g5. Uh... Yeah, it's a good practical choice. Mm, there's almost a funny line. I'm quite worried. I chase away the knight. In too long time. I think I just play this. A little passive. I was scared of rook b8. Now at least I got the knight to d4. It takes takes and the battery opens up. C three can come. We might see rook b eight. I don't know if I want to take it. Preemptively defending b two. And now I think I just go for it. YOLO. Ooh. For me. YOLO. It's terrifying. My king feels so naked, but I'm a couple of moves away from mating.
Oh no. Still alive. Most? That's three games in a row. I have dirty flagged my opponent from a losing position. Okay. 25.99. Let's go. Almost 2,600. The stream doesn't end until I hit 2,600. Yeah, I felt like I knew what I was doing in the opening. Until I didn't know what I was doing. It's a risky line to go into because white's kind of casting into the attack. But there's all this attacking potential for white as well. I mean, the engine will play this position so well. So, yeah, queen h2. I was scared of b4. It's it's very confusing. Like takes. I guess I do have to make some moves on the queen side before I, or maybe I don't. Bishop h six. Yeah, rook b eight. Only move bishop b five, man. This is why Stockfish is good at chess. Finds moves like this. Okay. Wait, let me check my performance. Yeah, the stream, I've... Okay, I started with Rapid. But with the Blitz games, I've won all eight games. And hopefully we'll have just one more. $25.99. I can't worry about the rating. Times like this, I just have to focus on playing good moves. I'll stick with London opening. Okay, this is already already winning for white. I don't think Black was expecting Queen G four. <laughs> um, although Queen B four is maybe coming, so I do have to be careful. Wait, I play Bullet. I meant to play Blitz, not Bullet. Oops. <laughs> oh, I got too excited. This is Bullet. Good thing I realized before flagging. Why did I click the Bullet button? Wait, I have to move quicker. I was trying to be instructive. Once he's six coming. Wow, look at this move. Okay. I was ready to under-promote to knight with another fork. Okay. I gained some bullet rating. <laughs> I didn't mean to play bullet. I guess it was just muscle memory taking over. I was wondering why my opponent was playing so fast in the opening. Okay. Here we go. I'm a high rated opponent. Stafford Gambit time. The first Stafford of the stream. They know the refutation. Oh, they're so well prepared. Well, are they prepared for this line? Oh, uh, they are. Oh, my bishop. Yeah, bishop f3 is the best move. Um, already here it gets a little bit murky. Knight d2, knight e5. Bishop here, bishop h3. This is actually not so simple for white. 
This is G2, it's made in two. I appreciate the top tier gameplay. Cheers. Right. That's the best way to do this. Also, thank you. Bishop g4. Problem with bishop g4 is castling. I have h4. And knight's pinned. White's a bit stuck here. Just trying to figure out the best way to apply pressure. Really? Oh, my bishop! It's supported by the queen. Yeah, bishop g4 is made in two. I was actually thinking about playing bishop g4 initially instead of h4. Okay, still takes work. I take... h3 first. Take, take. Go for this. Do I have rook d2? Rook d2. I win the rook in the end. In both lines? I win the rook in the end. Bishop, queen take, I take, I uh, check and win the rook. If king takes, I check here, check, and then win the rook. But I'm not actually sacrificing. Or am I sacrificing? I just sacrifice the rook. I still have to learn to say it with more enthusiasm. To make the screen shake. Oops. I just minimized everything. Okay. That's still a fight. I'm down on time too. This move. I'm giving up C seven. And C. It's not so simple. Very fancy. Oh, that's an amazing move. Play like this. I got too comfortable. Why did I sacrifice a rook? Oh, good move. If I cannot lose this, it'll be a miracle. It should be a draw, but it's not clear. There's this weird pawn breakthrough thing.
Okay. Hey! It's 2600. Oh. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed because it was a winning position. Maybe I shouldn't have traded queens. I came to rating point. Oh. Uh, how did I phrase a prediction? Did I say past 2600 or just hit 2600? Hit 2600. I probably passed it slightly though, right? What a final game. Such a nice number. Yeah, I'm, I'm 2640. So technically I hit it, but I also passed it by a fraction of, uh, of a rating point. So uh, good job to the 83 people who believed in me. Yeah, 30, 34 doubters. I think someone wagered like 150k points against me. So yeah, uh, sorry, but not so sorry. Okay, and now I can happily end the stream. I do want to actually check the opening of that game, though. Because my opponent was clearly prepared. But I, um, I think I was a little bit more prepared. And this is one of the most, like... Testing lines with the Stafford. Technically, it's a refutation. Like, white's plus four according to Stockfish. I wonder why it says plus four here, but plus... Oh, it didn't fully update. Now it does. Um, am I above 2600 in every time control? Not classical. Yeah, my classical rating... Uh, could use some work, but yeah, bullets, blitz, and, and rapid. Next stop, 2700. Yeah, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that will show Bishop F3 as a refutation and then just stop. And which is completely fair because like every line white's plus four or more, but there's a tricky... And tricky move bishop e6 and then after what happened in the game rook d8 knight d2 knight e5 it's really not that simple for white because after bishop e2 yeah white's like kind of walking a thin line apparently it's still better though castling is scary to play just because there's, it seems like there should be H file pressure, but I guess if I take, there's F takes. And Queen H6 runs into some knight move. Oh, Queen H6, G4. Wow. What happened in the game? My opponent played G4 here. After takes, it's still better for white, but casting is hard to find. And then this is completely winning for black. And sacrificing the rook is the best move. Yeah, and then I just let it slip. I got too excited. I started shaking the window in excitement. I am probably due for some classical chess. Sometimes I'll catch like the weekly or monthly arenas. Or very occasionally the yearly arenas. Continue stream, please. 
I would like to, but I feel like my voice needs a rest. I've been talking a lot. My mind needs a rest, too. But thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks again earlier to Botez Live. Thanks to the most recent resub of Lil Mo with a Gimp, Venus Chestnerd. So tomorrow, I won't be doing classical chess, but tomorrow is actually kind of a special event. Um, it'll be very high quality rapid it's 50 chess. Months. Wow. Wow, it's pie hole for 50 months. Welcome back, pie hole. I can't find the link, but it's part of the Champions Chess Tour on chess.com. And tomorrow there's like a qualifier event. It starts at 10 a.m. Central U.S. time. It'll probably be like four to five hours of of rapid. I think there's nine rounds total. And it'll be against other title players. Um, I will be streaming on a delay tomorrow. There will be, I think, a, a 30 second delay. I have to check the regulations. And chat will be in emote only mode, <laughs> at least during the games. So it'll be way more serious than usual. And then Tuesday is Title Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday I could play Arena Kings. Yeah, 30 second delay meaning that the stream won't be in complete real time. It'll be in, um, it'll be slightly delayed, mainly for fair play measures. So I'm going to send a raid to someone who hasn't streamed in a long time. Good friend of mine. WGM, Tativ Abrahamian. Looks like she's playing some Blitz. So do send some good vibes. Oh, it's a Karo's three check arena tomorrow. That is usually towards the end of the month. I'll have to check that. If he's doing the three check arena tomorrow, I might have to choose. Maybe I can try and play both. Activate simul mode. Anyway, send some good vibes to Tativ. Um, If you didn't have a chance to use a, your prime sub here, prime sub on her. And I'll be back soon. Adios.